The district senior final was on the same day. Guelph insisted that the game be played as scheduled. Behind Labnock's two-hit pitching, timely hitting, and stellar defense, the Werbe Ghouls won a rain-shortened seven-inning game, 10-0, which was Guelph's first defeat that season. Game two was scheduled for Wednesday, September 18th in Guelph. But on Tuesday, Guelph said they couldn't possibly play on Wednesday and wanted the game delayed to Saturday. The Werbe Ghouls objected and took their case to the Ontario Baseball Association and the OBA agreed that the game should be played as scheduled on Wednesday, September the 18th. When the Werbe Ghouls arrived, they were greeted by an empty exhibition park in Guelph. After practicing for an hour and having dinner in Guelph, the Werbe Ghouls were declared Ontario champions by default. If you're wondering where I got all this stuff, Mike Blazitich has an excellent uh, binder with all of the clippings from the uh, Tribune for that year. And so that's why, you know, I, I didn't spend years doing this research. It's all there. Mike has the binder here. I'm sure if you're interested in seeing it later, he'd be glad to share it with you. The Werbegulls were the first Welland Provincial title holders in history. On the return trip from Guelph, the players changed into their uniforms somewhere around Fawn Hill and were met at the Niagara Street Bridge by a fire truck and the Sea Cadet Bugle Band. <clears throat> Taking their places of honor on the big red fire truck, the players were transported by way of East Main, Cross, Division, and King Streets through hundreds of well-wishers who lined the route of the parade to Merritt Park. Then there were speeches of congratulations from Mayor T.H. Lewis, James Goring, the president of the Werbegulls Club who sponsored the team, and many others. Guelph protested the default, and an OBA hearing was held on September 24th. The OBA disallowed the Guelph protest, and the OBA confirmed the Welland Werbegulls as Ontario juvenile champions. But in a surprise move, and without consulting the coach or the players, the Werbegulls president, James Goring, offered to play the second game and risk the title. The Werbs were congratulated for their gesture of good sportsmanship. <coughs> game two was played in Guelph on September 28th, and the Werbs lost their first game of the year, four to one. The deciding game of the series was played at Burger Park on Saturday, October 5th. The Guelph Leaflets defeated the Welland Werbegulls 12-4 and won the Ontario Juvenile Baseball Championship. As reported in the Evening Tribune, quote, while there is warmth over the Werbs' sportsmanship in completing the finals on the field after they had been awarded the OBA Championship by default, naturally the loss of the title overshadows the globe. They were purely and simply the victims of a terrific psychological letdown." End of quote. We are proud to acknowledge the accomplishments of the 1940 Welling Werbegul Juvenile Baseball Team with its installation on the Welling Sports Wall of Fame. to get in touch with, um, well, for, we're fortunate to have three living ball players and one living bat boy, and we've been trying over the last week or so to get in touch with as many ball players, families as we could, families of the deceased. So now I'll call the uh, player's name and um, the family member who we're uh, hoping could attend today. There were two family members who aren't going to be represented. One was outfielder George Davidson, who passed away in 1946. The other is outfielder Keith Swayze. I thought this one would be an easy one, because everybody knows at least one Swayze, right? We've looked high and low for Keith Swayze. 
can't find him. Uh, we know that he was born in 1922. We know that he married in 1952. We know that he had a son, Stanley, in November of 1953, but we've been unable to locate either Keith or his son, Stanley. And uh, if any of you know where they are, <laughs> please let me know, okay? So we'll, we'll honor those two uh, in absentia. Then uh, we have outfielder Ross Allen, represented by a cousin. Um, we are either going to have Donna Moody or Doug Morris here. Not yet? Okay. Alex Billiard, represented by son Alan Billiard. Bill Cooney, represented by nephew Pat Cooney. Pat, I know you're here. You're supposed to come up and get the certificate, okay? Yeah, Bill passed away in 2009. Billy Shirk. Catcher who passed away in 2000, represented by his daughter, Barbara Scher. <laughs> Barbara Scher tells me that her dad taught her to be a catcher. <laughs> Steve Tolasi, who passed away in 1997, my dad. Represented by his brother, Bob Tolasi. passed away in 1995, represented by his nephew, Jerry Wright. <laughs> Coach Fred Ellsworth, who passed away in 1954, represented by his daughter, Marguerite Burns. Represented by his brother Fred Ellsworth Jr. Now we're on to the guys who are living, thank God. <laughs> Bad boy, Howard Ellsworth. Pitcher and third baseman, Mike Blasitich.
that's actually a clipping from the Evening Tribune. That's what, what I've read. Yeah. 1940, right. Pitcher Ronnie Hansen. Pitcher and third baseman, Johnny Labna. Johnny married my dad's first cousin, and he was always Uncle John to me, but his last name was Letvinuk. Everyone knew that. He was Johnny Letvinuk, except when he played in sports and well, and he was Johnny Labnock. I don't know whether you've noticed, but except for Howard Ellsworth, the bat boy, the three surviving members of the 1940 Wellman Workman Rules were all pitchers. <laughs> so maybe there's a message in that for the rest of us, you know, if you uh, want your son or daughter to live a long time, teach them to be a pitcher. <laughs> I, I want to double back for a minute and see whether uh, representatives of Ross Allen or Alex Billiard have arrived yet. Not a problem. The truth is, I told them if they were here by 20 after 3, they'd be early enough. Because I knew we had a number of politicians bringing greetings, right? And then half the politicians didn't show up, so that's why we're running out of schedule. Um, that's all I have, except uh, to mention that uh, I've just been added to this committee in, in the last uh, couple of months. But uh, we've heard rumblings that two longtime members of our committee are going to pack it in. That this might be their last kick at the can. We're talking about Tommy Bell and Wally Moore. And I think it would be appropriate for us to thank them for all the hard work and volunteer work at that that they put in for this committee over the years.